anticipated the next opportunity. We've had three really good days, man. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Guys are locked in, excited about it. Do you just approach it as, hey, we got to win this thing and get that auto bid and don't worry about it? We don't know. We, we approach it. We need to win Friday night. That's all we think about. That's all we talk about. Uh, we're, we're doing preparation for uh, both Missouri and Texas A&M. We're familiar with both, obviously. It just so happens that they're two of the four teams that we played twice, so we're very familiar with both. And it's just a matter for us for winning Friday, and we don't think beyond that. Andy, do you feel like you need to play Missouri from a numbers standpoint? I don't, I don't have any control over that. I'm just glad that we're playing Friday at 9 o'clock, and whoever we play, we need to win. If you play Missouri, what do they, what do, they do well? They do a lot of things well. They're very, very explosive, obviously. Uh, from a talent standpoint, I think there's talent in the league. It starts and stops with Phil Press and his ability in the open floor to make things happen. We did a good job. Uh, it was really a tale of two games. In, in the first game in Oxford, we did a good job of making him play in limited space, and as a result, uh, they didn't score as readily as they did in game two, where they, they, they looked terrific in the open floor. Do you think Marshall's playing with a chip on his shoulder for not making first team? Yeah, Marshall always plays with a chip on his shoulder, first team or second team, it doesn't really matter. He He's going to be excited about playing. He's already talked about you know his first opportunity to play in the SEC tournament, and we know what's on the line, so all of our guys are excited. What did you make of, of Marshall not making the first team, and Murphy too? Being I was a little surprised, but I, I'm not as big a conspiracy theorist to some. You know, I, I think it is what it is. You know, um, they could have split the vote. You know, Marshall had good games, bad games. Murphy had good games, bad games. I don't read too much into it. These seniors talking about how important this trip is. Well, I, we talked about it enough. I, I'm just, I can see a, a, a bounce in their step. I, I hear them being very vocal this week. They understand time's coming to a close and they want to go out on the right note. How is Anthony doing? He's going to be available. Uh, I, I would anticipate him playing. He's come a long way. He's, he's been in his first game action, his first five on five action, really, since the injury was this week, and he's responded well. Andy, what would y'all need to do differently against Alex Oriaki? Well, we've got to keep a body on him. You know, we've shown Reg a lot of tape, and as the leading shot blocker in the history of our program, he's got to do what he does, and that's get to the ball. But he's got to be smarter. Many times, Oriaki with the 10 offensive rebounds came on him over-rotating and, and not getting a guard inside Oriaki and trying to fight him for position. It's got to be a physical game force, uh, and and we've got to make sure that, that we do a good job on both ends of the glass. Yeah, they shot so much better uh, at Missouri. Was that just about them being at home? They were just two for 18 from three in Oxford. Yeah, they, you know, it's just uh, it's just the way college basketball is. I, I, I thought they really got into a great rhythm going into the game. Keon Bell, I think, had made two or three threes in league play. I think he goes three for three against us. Pressy so excited. Explosive. You try to contain him and keep him in front of you. And when he's making jump shots, he's, he's really a handful. Uh, Bowers was back. Bowers can stretch you at that four. So they've got a number of weapons. Anything in particular you're harping on to these guys this week to be successful? No, for us, I think we've shown capable. It's a matter of consistency with us as it is with most everyone. And I just want them to live in the moment. You know, forget about the 23, forget about the 8, forget about the 12, forget about the 6. It's about the 1 Friday night. I heard you talking to him about legs a minute ago. How important is the double buy for you guys? Well, I think it's important if you if you get deeper into the tournament. Uh, I actually think it's a disadvantage early uh, because whoever we play, if it's A&M, obviously the advantage is the fact that they've had two hard-fought games to get there. So there'll be a little bit uh, more fatigue, but they've also you know, had two victories on that floor. Missouri, obviously, if it's them, they have had the, uh, the benefit of going through a game and, and obviously claiming a victory. So for us, it'd be our first time on the floor. The advantage is, again, that, that we should be fresh if we take the right approach. Well, like y'all, when y'all make y'all's run in that third game, y'all was, the legs were gone. You can tell they were losing his fan. But could that happen with the, any team that you get? So I you think get so. I think, you know, you, you try not to think about it as a coach, and you certainly don't want your players to think about it. But when you're playing like we are with, a, with basically an eight-man rotation and the front court's a little thin, uh, that third game, I think,